Hey guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Welcome to Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness, a daily podcast devoted to spirituality and self-help. If you're new, I want to welcome you. If you're returning, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about how remaining positive, even in times of difficulty, is so super important. And how when we just stop resisting to things and we get in the flow, everything comes to us naturally. And I wanted to give you an example of what's happening in my life to show you that, I I mean, I've learned so many lessons lately, but the most important thing I've learned is that when I try to control outcomes and when I try to overanalyze things, overthink, I get in my own way. And I think part of the biggest lesson for most of us is just learning how to let go. And that is such a difficult thing to do sometimes because we are creatures of habit. We want to try to control every outcome. And when we don't know what's going to happen, we immediately go into that panic mode and that overthinking and we create scenarios that would never even happen. So I shared with you last week that my mom was experiencing some health issues So we got the news this week that it is cancer and that it's on her pancreas. Now, the first thing people think when they hear pancreatic cancer is it's a death sentence, right? Like, oh my gosh, that's immediately where my mom's mind went. And for some strange reason that I cannot understand, except that I believe I was listening to my intuition, when we found this out, I didn't feel upset. I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel like this was it. This was the end. I just felt a peace. Like I knew this was going to be okay. We were being taken care of. And I don't know how to explain it. You know, it's not like I didn't have a heart and I was like, oh, suck it up. That's not it. It's just I knew from the very core of my being that everything was going to work out and it was going to be okay. Even in the beginning when they were saying there's a mask, but we don't know if it's going to be benign or malignant. And even then I was like, well, it, you know, it's going to be fine. And I even had a gut feeling that they were going to tell us that it was going to be malignant. And I still felt okay. It's something I couldn't explain at the time. Like, I don't know why, but I just know it's going to be okay. And then I went home and, you know, of course I do my cards. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pull some cards. And all of the cards that I pulled showed that she was going to get better and it was all going to be okay. And then we started doing research because, again, people think pancreatic cancer. Oh, my gosh, that's death sentence. And it's not. What we found out was that she happened to be incredibly lucky that the mass on her pancreas was on the head of the pancreas and not the tail because when it's on the tail, it doesn't cause any symptoms. But because it was on the head of the pancreas, it was restricting her bile duct, which is what started making her sick, which is why she went to the doctor in the first place, which is why they found it. So it was actually a blessing, a huge blessing. But not only that, once we discovered like, okay, this might be the case, we all started doing research and we're like, stay positive, stay positive. And we found out that Barnes Hospital, which is 20 minutes from my house, is the best in the nation for this kind of cancer because they have a Know Your Tumor program. And then we found out through talking to other people that there were at least three people that we knew of who had the same kind of cancer. They all had the same doctor at Barnes who was part of a team. And they're like, they're the best, he's the absolute best. So throughout this whole thing, I just kept saying to my team, okay, you guys got this, you know, just be with her, give her strength, help her to not be afraid, but I know you've got us, so help us. I didn't panic. It wasn't a desperation thing. It wasn't a please, oh my gosh, it wasn't that. It was a calm, okay, I know this is all going to work out, so please align everything and please allow... Our, my spiritual team, her spiritual team to be around us and to support us and lead us to the people who can help. And everything I believe has worked out for a reason. So she had to go through a procedure where they were going to put a stent in. 
And they tried doing that and they could not get it in because apparently where they want to put it, it's very like soft tissue. And so it didn't want to stay in. So she woke up that first day from them trying to put the stent in and they said we couldn't do it. And also your tumor is most likely malignant. You know, we're pretty sure it is. And I mean, she was so defeated that day. Of course, anybody would be, especially hearing that, you know, it's cancer. We were all like, oh, but we said to her, okay, that's, you know, this is just a setback. Don't go to that negative space, you know, and the thing is, you're going to experience those things. And we said to her, yeah, you know, yes, you're going to be shocked. You're going to be upset, but don't stay in that space because it's not going to help you. You've got to stay strong. And she, she did like the next day she was back like, okay, we're going to take this one step at a time. And they call back and they said, we're going to try again. We've got a plan this time, three different options. We're going to try because the tumor was restricting her bile duct. So it was making her very sick and she was getting very jaundiced and yellow and losing weight and all those things. And so she just wasn't feeling well. And that was for me, I'm like, you know, I just want her to be able to feel better. So they went back and the doctor tried again and the first way it didn't work. So he did the second thing, the second thing on his plan on his list and it worked and he was very good with her. And he said, okay, now I'm going to send you to a surgical specialist to this Dr. Hawkins, who is the same doctor that all of these people before that we heard about had, you know, and there are several doctors on that team. But I was like, oh, please send her to the best. And then here she gets Dr. Hawkins. So then they're going to discuss, you know, how this is going to work for her. But they've said, this is totally treatable. You're going to be okay. And they've been encouraging her. And it's just been such an awesome thing to see that, you know, we didn't panic. We didn't get upset. But I understand. I understand going to that place. I really, really do. But it doesn't help anything. A lot of our battles are mental. And we have to be prepared to fight mentally as well as emotionally and physically. And honestly, as I reflected on this and I was asking my team, okay, what is this about? What kept coming up for me is this is a lesson for her in taking better care of herself and not putting herself last because she's always going out and doing for everyone else. Even just a few weeks before she got really sick, we were out donating, like we were um, handing food out with the food bank, which is very tiring and you're out in the heat and you're doing all of this, you're lifting things. And so she's always out doing for other people. And it's a lesson for her to take care of herself and to put herself first instead of always putting herself last. And also, it's a lesson in having a positive mindset because I love her dearly, but she does tend to go to the negative sometimes. And that's just an ingrained thing because that's what she was raised around. And that's a hard thing to break. But I'm here to tell you that your health isn't just about your physical health. Your emotional and mental health are absolutely as important as your physical health. And in fact, most of the time, the reason we end up getting sick is because we aren't taking care of the emotional and the mental. When you constantly hold on to negative emotions, you are in effect slowly killing yourself because that stuff will kill you. You have got to let go of the negative. You've got to heal the emotional. You have to. There have been so many studies that show that when people are positive, it improves their health. It improves everything. And if you believe in the law of attraction, what you focus on grows. So if you sit there and you focus on negative things, it's like you're focusing on toxic things in your life. And when you focus on that, what do you think is going to happen? It grows and it grows kind of like a toxic cancer in your body too. And it's important for us to understand that if we really want to be healthy, if we want to feel better, we've got to start taking care of ourselves. There are so many people out there 
who have this attitude of I'll do it later, right? I'm guilty sometimes, like, oh, I should work out, but I'll do it later. Oh, I want to go get a massage. Well, I'll do that later. That is us putting ourselves last. We're finding every other thing in the world that we can do besides working on ourselves. And you're never going to be healthy if you're always putting yourself last. This message keeps coming up to me. It came up in the Facebook Live we did the other night. You have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. And so many of us, you're kind-hearted. You want to go out. You want to help others. And that's my mom, for sure. As a teacher, she always wants to make sure everyone else has what they need. And it's hard for her to let others take care of her. Like she doesn't want to be the patient, right? And I understand that. I'm very much the same way. Like when I'm sick, I usually just want to be alone. I don't want people like doting all over me, not because I hate that, but just because I feel bad that anybody else would have to take their own time to come and check on me. But we have to learn how to let people do that for us because we deserve to be taken care of sometimes. We deserve to have help. And I think that a lot of these illnesses and things that pop up in our lives, it's really a lesson. I think it's a twofold lesson. It's a lesson about, number one, slowing down, taking time out to work on self-care, right? Like, I need to be better about my diet, or I need to just move around a little bit, get a little exercise. And, you know... (laughs) The thing is, we are so ingrained to think that we have to do everything all at once. And you see all of these Facebook posts that are like, do a hundred pound transformational weight loss. And it makes us feel bad because we feel like, I don't have the time to do that. Or I don't have the energy to do that. Or I don't have the discipline or whatever it takes. And I'm here to tell you, and this is one of the things that I teach in my Love Your Life program. You don't have to do it all at one time. Start small. Start with manageable chunks that you can handle. So that might be, hey, every morning I'm going to do a 10 or 15 minute workout because people think, oh, you got to work out for hours and hours. No, you don't. It's changing little things. The little things that you change and do every day are the things that add up to the huge differences. I don't get up and work out for hours on end. I love this one program that I have. And uh, the name of the program is actually um, Bodies in Motion with Gilad, G-I-L-A-D. And he was just on TV, JLTV, in my area. And they have free shows every morning. There were like two workout shows. There were Bodies in Motion and then um, Total Body Sculpting or something like that. And it's two half-hour shows. So I would record them every day. And I would do one of them. I didn't always do them both, but I would do one every morning. It's a half an hour, really only 20 minutes when you consider commercial breaks. So it didn't take too long. Or I would say, okay, I'm going to drink two more glasses of water today than I did yesterday. Or I'm going to put a little more green into my diet. I'm going to make a green shake. Like I'm going to make it. There are a lot of those healthy shakes that you can do that tastes good because you put fruit and things in it, but you also put in kale and that. And so it kind of hides the taste of the spinach and the kale and you get more of the sweetness of it. So you can make one of those green shakes and say, okay, I'm going to eat this. All of those things you do make yourself feel a little bit better. The exercise releases endorphins and it boosts my mood when I work out because I feel so much better afterwards. And it kind of sets the tone for my day. Like, yeah, I'm going to take on the day. So I do little things. You know, or I'm going to, if I drink soda, which I don't drink soda anymore um, because it's just a source of a lot of calories that are empty. So I would say, okay, when I did drink soda, I'm only going to have one for this week. I'm going to cut back. And again, I would never say deprive yourself of anything, but what small changes can you make in your life that are going to make a big difference for you? And the funny thing is when you start doing little things, they really do add up. 
Like when I started my transformation, I said, okay, I'm going to do my gratitude in the morning and I'm going to name five things I'm grateful for. I said, okay, I'm going to add a meditation at night. I'm going to do a tapping when I start feeling crappy feelings. And I've started now even, I found on YouTube, there is this woman. I think she's just so great. And I'm going to pull this up so I can tell you exactly what her name is. I believe it's Mariella. And she does light code activations, which sounds, might for some of you, be like, I don't know what that is because I didn't really know what that was either. But she does all of these activations. Her name is Mariella Lacunza. Mariella Lacunza. And it's L A C U N Z A. And she's on YouTube. And she does light activations for like opening up certain chakras. So I, and other things too, but I did one when I first found her. I was looking for a heart chakra activation because I had been told, you know, oh, you need to work on your heart chakra. And I thought, yeah, yeah, that would make sense. So I found her and she did this. She does the, the light language, which activates different parts of your body. So she did the light language and it's so amazing because she, she makes this noise and it almost sounds like a tuning fork, but it's her actual voice and she's singing. And then throughout this whole heart chakra activation, I could feel emotions that I didn't even know were there coming up. And I was just like crying by the end of it because it was bringing up all of this stuff for me that I had stuffed way down deep. And so for me, part of taking care of myself is also making sure that I am dealing with emotions that aren't serving me because I've had a lot of things happen to me recently, but I know it's all happening to help me open up to the fact that I can't stuff things deep down. I've got to deal with it, even though like I normally, you know, as my mom, she would say, oh, you've been so strong. I consider myself to be a strong person. But even strong people have to feel their emotions and they have to heal it and they have to deal with it. And that's what I'm trying to work on doing for myself right now. That's my self-care is really working on these deep inner emotions that all of the things that have been happening in my life recently have brought up. But I think it's so interesting that when all of this stuff happened with my mom, I didn't go to that immediately, that panic and whatever. I just trusted I just knew things were meant to work out and everything was going to be okay. And I'm just seeing how every little thing is unfolding. And even as things are unfolding that, hey, we've sent you to the best, the best of the best. And even the person that you had researched, we sent you to that person. All of that has already unfolded. As it is, I've been getting little signs along the way too. Like a song came on when I was sitting waiting for the results of the procedure where she had the stent put in and it was every little thing's going to be all right by Bob Marley. And that was a sign of, yeah, I hear you. It is going to be okay. So I really feel like a lot of the lessons that are coming up that I'm seeing in my own life are that we need to be taking better care of ourselves and we need to be dealing with our emotions. That all goes hand in hand. So what little things can you do if you know you have deep inner stuff to work on? Because at least most of us do. What little things can you do? And I think journaling is a great thing. We talk about the forgiveness all the time. That is an amazing thing and, and something that I know that has helped me tremendously is forgiving people who didn't ask for it, but who have hurt you. Because it's important to recognize that what happened to you wasn't fair. But we don't want to say in that it wasn't fair victim mentality. We want to use that and say, well, it wasn't fair, but what was it teaching me? And sometimes it can just simply be, I need to set healthier boundaries. I need to be better about when I know someone's not good for me, walking away or telling them, no, you're not going to treat me this way. So all of the little things we can do daily to improve our lives, start thinking about what can you do? so that you're living your life in a way that puts you first. And for some of you, that's a foreign concept, but you absolutely must put yourself first. 
And how can you live your life in a way that's taking care of your emotional and mental needs? And sometimes that's simply keeping my thoughts in check, which can be the hardest thing. It's when something bad happens to me, I don't immediately go to that place of panic and my brain doesn't start coming up with scenarios that aren't even going to happen. You have to visualize, just like the guest we had yesterday or the day before, Sebastian said, you have to visualize a life you want. What does it look like? And I think that the vision boards people use, these are so great because it's great for really visualizing and seeing this is what I want my life to look like. But the problem is so many of us often make our vision boards and then we never go back to them and look. There's no point in that. If you make a vision board, go look at it every day and for a few minutes say, thank you, God, that this is coming. I know it's mine because everything I need, everything I want is already inside of me. This is the amazing thing, too. I did another one of those light language activations with Mariella the other day, and it was it was all about that everything you want or need is within you. But I don't think that's what it was called. It was called something like um, knowing that, I forget, it was something about knowing your, you have everything. I don't know. It was something, it was a manifestation. Maybe it was just called manifestation. That's what it was. But while I was in the middle of doing this light activation, I kept hearing that over and over and over and over. I have everything I want. I have everything I need. It's within me. I have everything I want. I have everything I need. It's within me. I kept hearing that over and over and over again as I was doing this. And I knew that was coming from within me. That's my awakening to the fact that we already have what we need. So there's no need for us to be begging the universe for things. Put your intention out there. Say, this is what I want. And then every day, just thank you. That's all you have to say. Thank you. Because when we constantly obsess over it, we're blocking it because it's like we're telling the universe, I don't believe that you're bringing it. But when we just say, this is my intention and we let it go and we go with the flow, knowing I have what I want. I already have it. It's mine. Thank you. And we let it go. It comes in. The more you're able to let go and just be in the flow, the more things will show up for you. It's the law of attraction. It's knowing that everything we want is in the vortex and our vibration has to match that. How do we do that? By just working on being the happiest and best versions of ourselves. It's not always easy, but it's possible. And what that means is by being present in the moment and when I need to take a moment to raise my vibration, clear my energy, I do it because things happen throughout our day. We run into people who are nasty or we see comments on Facebook that make us mad. We have to take a moment, take a breath, reset. Sometimes for me, that's doing a tapping. Sometimes for me, that's simply thinking of a, a happy thought, a happy memory, or something that I want in the future, seeing it and being happy because like, oh, I love that that's going to be my house in the future. I love that. And then just moving on because that helps to raise your vibration. And that's what it's all about. You can't manifest things if you are angry or upset or all of those low vibrational feelings. So we've got to just constantly be aware of what we're thinking. What are we feeling? And I know this has been like a whole mixture of things I've talked about today, but I felt like this is where I was led to go. You know, just do things every day that make you happy. I mean, really, life is all about finding your bliss. It really is. I know people miss that point all the time. They're like, oh, life sucks. I can't believe this is my life. This happened. I, you know, And they're just constantly not even appreciating the life they have and being so angry and upset and all of those emotions that aren't serving us. Instead of saying, oh my gosh, you know, I can't believe that I have such an amazing family or that I love my job or that all of these flowers in my yard are so beautiful or just the little things. I mean, it doesn't even have to be anything big, but just being appreciative for what we have 
And it's hard because there's so much crap going on in the world right now. And it can make you feel so uncomfortable and like you're living in a nightmare sometimes. But we cannot feel that way. What that tells me is if you're seeing that and you're feeling that way, take a break. Turn off the social media. Take Step back from it for a little bit. Or make sure that you're only looking at positive things. Maybe go find videos of animals. I, that always makes me smile. And anytime I'm around my niece, she's always got, hey, look at these videos of these cats. Like falling off of things or doing something funny. And that really can quickly change your vibration to watch something that makes you laugh. To read a good book. To watch a funny show. All of those things. So start finding little ways that you can add value to your life. What are you doing to add value? For me, it's appreciating now the time I get to spend with my family. It's appreciating getting to do this podcast and meeting the people I've met because of doing this podcast. It's all of the the new tools and things that I'm learning that are helping me to live my best life. It's the time I get to spend to work out, to go get a massage, to, you know, do the things that I enjoy doing. That makes me happy. So what is it that makes you happy? And how can you live your best life? What are some things, little things, it doesn't have to be huge, that you can do every day to make your life more enjoyable? So if you don't know, Sit down and journal this. Okay, think about what makes me happy. Or I like, what have I always wanted to do, but I've been too afraid to do? For me, I've always wanted to learn French. And you might think, well, that wouldn't be such a big stretch for you because you teach German. I know, but for some reason, that's one of those things I keep putting on the back burner. Like, I'll do that someday. I'll do that someday. And I need to actually do it, right? I need to take the initiative and do it. So what are some things that you've always wanted to do, but you just keep putting it off? Think about that. What would add value to your life? What would add bliss to your life? If you said to someone, my life is absolutely blissful, what would your life have to look like for you to say that? It can be little things, little things. Maybe once a month or once every few months, you pay for someone to come in and clean your house because it's just something you don't like doing and you want to have your house clean, but you're like, you know what? I don't enjoy cleaning. Maybe it's something as simple as that. Whatever it is, find little ways that you can treat yourself And I feel bad even saying treat yourself because you should be doing this every day and it should be no big deal. But how can you live your life so that when the major things happen to you, you don't panic, you don't worry, you just know that you're being taken care of because you are. And that is the point. We don't ever need to worry or fear or panic because no matter what happens to us, God has us. The universe has us. You are taken care of. It's just remembering that and remembering that life isn't about worry. That's not the lesson in life. Life is about living and loving and experiencing all of the amazing things there are to experience. So I hope that you are living a blissful life. But if you're not, maybe talk. It's time to start thinking about how you can be. All right, guys. Well, I wanted to pull a card for you today. And also, I want to say thank you to those who have reached out to me and said they're praying for my mom. I really appreciate that. I really, truly do. I feel the prayers and I appreciate the continued prayers because even though I know we've got this, prayer never hurts, you know? I always believe that. So the card I pulled for you today is from the numerology deck by um, Michelle Buchanan. And the card is time out. I already kind of talked about this, 
I believe now more than ever, especially with having this pandemic, we are being asked to really take a time out and to look at our lives and to say, where can I make improvements? What can I do better? How can I be happier? I want to read the full card though, because I don't use this deck all that often. So it says this card indicates a need to take a time out from your busy schedule and the hustle and bustle of life. Perhaps you've been working too hard or have a lot going on. Maybe you've been tired, irritable, and anxious, or not generally feeling, or you're generally feeling unwell. If you've been under stress of any kind or have been spending time in a negative or toxic environment, you must remove yourself from the situation to heal and recharge. This is the perfect time to take a vacation. Even a day or two away will revive and recharge your soul. And guys, even if you can't take a vacation where you actually go somewhere, because believe me, I've been trying to do that this summer and every vacation I planned I've had to cancel and that's okay. Sometimes it's a vacation just from the toxicity. So that's making sure that the place where you dwell and call yourself home, sometimes it's just our own body is resting and is receiving good treatment, treating yourself well. You don't necessarily need to leave your home. You could have around the house, you could, sorry, you could laze around the house and unplug your computer and phone, have an energy healing, get a massage or a facial waxing or soak in a hot bath, taking a walk in nature, watching a movie and reading a good book. Those are perfect ways to relax. You know, Reiki, that is a great way to heal. And in my Reiki sessions, not only do I heal your energy, but then at the end, you receive a guided meditation. And from my clients, what I hear is they sleep like a baby after having an energy healing. So think about that. Or even some people like just getting readings because, you know, I'm one of those people too. I like to have readings. It's kind of fun to know what's coming up in my life. And is there anything I can learn to help me grow and to make my life better? Whatever this is saying, take time to work on yourself. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here with me. I hope that you all have a wonderful and beautiful day from wherever you're listening. Don't forget, subscribe to this podcast if you like it. Please leave a review from wherever you're listening if you like it. Leave me some stars on iTunes. Also, share my podcast with others. That helps me so much. Thank you for those of you who've done that. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I go live Mondays at 6.30 Central for a free card reading on Facebook, and I post videos to IGTV. I also post meditations and tappings on my YouTube channel, so go check that out and subscribe there as well. If you want to work with me, you can go to my website, melissaoatman.com. There you will see a list of services that I offer, and you can book, well, you can purchase from the website and then contact me so we can schedule your session because all sessions are done online through Zoom so you'd never need to leave the comfort of your home. All right guys, thank you so much. I am sending so much love and light. I hope that everyone is experiencing amazing blessings in their life right now. And if you're not, know that you will be. Just need to work on having a different perspective, looking at life differently. All right. Well, I will talk to you again soon. Bye, guys.